What is going on YouTube? Good morning. Today is a beautiful day of a Sunday. What is it? February 18th. February 18th. And currently 27 degrees outside. It got a little bit warmer. Half hour ago it was a little bit less. So about 22. Now we're getting ready to go buy some breakfast. First time with uh, Goldwing. So stay tuned. See what happens. This is the longest ride that I'm having with this bike. Uh, hopefully everything went right. It's gonna go right, so stay tuned. Also, we're gonna meet Motor Squid. He's gonna bring his Goldwing 12, uh, 1100. And we're gonna do a little comparison to see what the differences are between the older generation and this one. This is not too new, but it's newer than his, so check it out. All right, guys. This is it, cold stored. Cold start. No choke. Just put a choke on for a little bit to warm up. It's really cold. Alright, as you guys can see, a few minutes later, the bike starting to warm up, idling just fine. We're uh, on the way to bike some breakfast Bullfield, Maryland, and I believe Motor Squid is on its way as well. I'm gonna meet him over there, and uh, we're gonna do some uh, comparisons. He's gonna ride it as well because he hasn't uh he didn't ride it since i was i was all done with it but we have to take it easy it's uh it's cold it's really cold outside it's under 30 degrees but i feel pretty predicted with the gold wing don't get me wrong i don't feel any wind so that's great plus i have heated grips in case my hands get get warm Damn, my radio in overdrive. Just stay in fourth gear, it's fine. Um, yeah, my voice is vibrating because of the freaking... I feel it vibrating because of the, of the droning of the exhaust. But, like I said, we gotta take it easy. It's really cold out. Tires are still cold. As you guys can see, we still have snow out. It snowed the other day. And he hasn't melted yet. So that show you how cold it is. So far so good. Made a few miles from miles from the house. Bike runs like it should. I don't like my gloves though. I got my winter gloves. I literally feel no wind. I should just I have another set of gloves in the trunk. But I should have just uh, kept my uh, my fall riding gloves. They're a little bit thinner. This was too thick, and my my hands are fat, so I have really big paws. And uh, keeping them in a, in this position, they're pretty tight. So a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm just easing up on the throttle. I'm just doing my thing. See, there's a bunch of salt on the road. You have to watch out for it when you ride in the winter. Man, I'm not cold at all. Like, I'm surprised. Surprised, but not surprised, because the way this fairing is designed, <laughs> you feel like you're in a freaking Honda Civic. I literally feel no wind, nothing. My buddy, though, on the other hand, Motor Squid, I'm sure he's gonna hate his life because he <laughs> is going. <laughs> he doesn't have any protection. He took the fairing out, so he's kind of like a cafe racer, or naked. Yeah, with this exhaust, I doubt I'm ever gonna hear the speakers. But oh well, oh my god, those chickens are frozen in place. I know that. Let's see, I know over here, there's a bunch of cups, so I'm just gonna do the full stops. Nice and easy. There's one more over there, my buddy got cut right here. And I signal him 
but I thought he has a cardo on but he didn't he had a half helmet with no cardo so come on buddy go Right, we're getting close to the beautiful Poolsville, Maryland. Uh, we started having some ice and snow on the road, which I just had a oh shit moment. You know, when you're passing over a patch of ice or melted snow or melted ice, kind of that slush, you front and go like you. I'm wondering how many bikers gonna be a bike from breakfast. I assume not that many. Because it's cold, boy. It's really cold. I tell you what, guys. Gold Wing 1500, or at least this one that I'm riding right now, and 1800. Perfect, perfect vehicle for winter riding. I'm telling you man, if I would have ridden, if I would have ridden a, a naked bike right now or a sport bike, I would freeze my ass off. Like I would be dying. Yeah. Here's the only bike in there. Wow. Frozen yet? <laughs> <laughs> Andy, Alex, nice to meet you. Hi. Good morning. Thanks for coming. How far did you have to go? Uh, from Clarksburg, so it's about 25 minutes away. Oh my gosh, that's a long ride on a cold day. Good for you. I can feel a thing on this thing. You got, you got heat? Yep, I do. Oh wow. <laughs> I got no heat. <laughs> but I don't have very far to go either. I just live a mile away. Yeah, my buddy is about to come too. He has a Gold 1100, but he's just not with the fairing and all. The beginning of Honda Grom. I think, yep, that's my buddy. <laughs> what year is your bike? Mine is a 94. 94, wow. These things only last forever. Yep, only forever. <laughs> Alright, seems like we're going to Jim's house to see his bike collection. Motor Squid is here. Let's uh, follow him home and see his bike collection. Honda, Honda! Honda, Honda, Honda! Kawasaki. <laughs> Seems like it was a Honda day for uh, today. Bike some breakfast. Sweet. It's like a. It's like a showroom. Yeah, that's a pretty good. It's pretty good. Wow. Oh, the eleven twenty-five R. I love this one. Me too. I'd rather ride that than that uh, Ducati, the 996. Ooh. I had an XB9 or uh, XB9 XS. Oh, that's a good bike. Nice little bike. Look at that Buell, our R1200. Oh, wow. Norton. This is the original Scoot Triple. Let's see how many miles Harley on Davidson, it. VR1000. 300 miles on it. Oh, my. Jeez. So, fully, fully recommissioned. And uh, I'll probably be selling that one, too. Wow. This is like a brand new VFR. It is a brand new VFR. And there's the big king. On That's incredible. Well, what is that one? The B motor. Wow, look at this B motor, bro. Jeez. What is that? What is that? It's like a small. Oh, my Wow. <laughs> that's incredible. Wow. That's. Yeah, that's okay. And this is one of the 30. This is one of 30. One of 30. That's crazy. Wow. It is so. It's radical. So it's a V twin. It's still fast as hell. It does run. I've ridden it. And I mean, it decommissioned it now, so it doesn't have gas in it. But it's a uh, one of 30. It's really, really. Valuable. It's probably one of the Harley's mm -hmm. most valuable bikes. Something like Honda's, wow. Like, like the NR or the Orson. Yeah, the NR. They yeah. made at least like a couple hundred of those. Yeah, 
Yeah. But one of 30. So, so they, they made 60 bikes total, 30 race bikes, which again, that's one up there. And it competed. But uh, I was in search of that for about 10 years. And uh, my guys at Iconic came up with it. And uh, basically for a 10 grand. And that one's got racing history. And they call that in the world of bikes, they call that the Fabergé egg. And the Fabergé egg is, uh, uh, again, you know, a really big piece of Harley history and, so and race power history. Doing? It's, it's not a lot. It's like 130 horsepower, but it rate, still, but it, rate, it weighs 350 something pounds. Wow. It's that one. So. Does that one have only 79 miles or 796 miles? Which one? The this one. I don't even know what the odometer says on that. It was. It's just 79, yeah, and then the red number. What's that? Your photo? He goes, do you want it? I'm like, oh man, I'd love to have that helmet. How, how much you want for it? He goes, oh, I got no use for it. I'll just send it to you. <laughs> so here it is with the same paint scheme as the bike. And uh, it's super cool. So yeah, that's, there's, uh, there's your little American bike history with a little bit of uh, Italian thrown in and some other new stuff. Yeah, because they have it's like a conceptual sort of. Yeah, I have a book. If anybody ever wants to borrow it, it talks about all of the bikes of the, the great bikes of the year. All right, guys. So we just left Jim's garage. Great guy. Really cool motorcycle collection. Is the first time going to his place, and um, his collection is really good. Really, uh, really impressive collection. And that's not all. He has more to another another place but really cool to see all those cool looking bikes especially that bimota uh mantis i believe is so side by side two legends from honda this is the gl 1500 aspen Kate, and that one is the gl 1100 interstate that came with a fairing but it was uh removed due to aesthetics and uh that one was so much heavy so he just saved up some weight 100 pounds. about 100 pounds of weight saved up uh but the difference between those two bikes this one has four cylinders boxer that one has a six cylinder boxer this one has four carburetors that one has only two i know it's a little bit different but this is how they came out with the going 1000, 1100, and 1200. They have four carburetors. And the 1500, they came with uh, only two carburetors. Uh, powering up uh, one carburetor for uh, each side of the engine, three, three cylinders. They work just fine. Um, it has plenty of power, plenty of torque in any RPM. Only have five gears, I believe. The 1100 has only five gears as well. Mm -hmm. My uh, fifth gear is an overdrive, so it's a longer gear. But I still feel like the 1500 could run a little bit less RPM. For some reason, it just runs a little high. Maybe the gears is, are shorter. But um, yeah, you'll uh, you'll see in the video that you know you, your ribs are pretty high. It looks like you're going so fast, but actually not. Um, but once you put in overdrive, it's just like you know cruising mode. Um, this 1100 it's much lighter than the 1500 and uh, the size comparison uh, lengthwise they're about the same maybe the 1500 is a little bit longer um, but the weight it's so it's so different that one is much heavier than this one this one is about like 600 pounds that one is about nine so he has a whole lot more fairing a bigger engine and uh yeah it's heavier that one has uh, my 1500 has cruise control reverse this one does not have cruise control and reverse um this one came with the speakers as well he just removed them when uh, he took the fairing out my still has uh, four speakers two in the front two in the back um 
he kept his pretty pretty much stock besides removing the the front fairing and changing the handlebars and the headlight um, but um, they're really great bikes and you know it's they're part of the Honda history cruiser uh, not cruiser more, more like touring motorcycles they were more interested in competing with the cruisers in America and then eventually they became much more touring oriented you'll feel the geometry on this is very like it doesn't seem to go into corners that well Especially like low speed handling, I would imagine it would be a little bit better, but I think it's the the rake. The rake, of the, yeah, it looks like yours is just raked out a little bit more. Yeah. Mine is a little bit, uh, um, the angle, it's uh, less aggressive than yours. But it's a cool bike, you know, a lot of people like gold ones, and I can see why. The smoothness, I mean, this is a 1981 bike, and it's silky smooth. It is a smooth is bike. Smooth. It's got a couple of false neutrals if you're riding it aggressively, uh -huh. but most of the time it's just like just unbelievably good. Yeah, hopefully uh, my GoPro charged up a little bit so I can uh, I can talk a little bit while riding. But uh, let's jump on them and then uh, see what you think. Let's do it. So I'm riding the GL GL1100. So much weirder than mine. Weird. Take it easy. All right, let's take it easy through this. He has a noise because of the RPM, the RPM uh, cable, the tachometer. It's uh, it's making a weird noise. But hey. We're riding. It's so much weirder than mine, man. I feel like I had, I'm so crammed up in here. Okay, he's right behind me. All right. All right, he's coming. Oh, he's so smooth. His bike is so smooth. I like this. But I don't like that I don't have any fairings. The wind protection is like minimal. Minimal wind protection. So I'm glad I'm just layered up pretty good. So I don't have to worry about wind freezing me to death. But it's a, it's a cool riding motorcycle. It's a little bit more aggressive stance than uh, it was factory because um, he changed the handlebars to those dirt bike style handlebars. Oh my God, it's so much salt on the road. It's like 20 some degrees outside, it's really cold, but we had some snow the other day, you guys can see. But uh, this bike, I like it. I could uh, I could see why people get those to make uh, cafe racers out of those because the engine is so smooth. I like it. I, I I really do. I'm impressed with the smoothness of this motorcycle. Like the brake, I have to like take my foot off the of the peg to be able to access the rear rear brake. It's a weird, weird position. Looks like he has a uh, air suspension in the rear too. He has the, the light on right now, probably because he switched it to uh, regular shocks instead of having the air shocks. But this motorcycle rides really nice. And the power? Yeah, he has a little bit of power. Not a whole lot, but it's really smooth. <laughs> he says, he says he's really comfortable. <laughs> I believe him. I know he is. I know he is really comfortable. It is really windy right now. It blows me all over the damn place. And uh, with the temperature that are right now, I believe it's gonna be. It's, it's gonna feel like 15 degrees out. It's really cold. But I got my winter gloves on. 
I have few layers, few layers on me, and uh, I don't really feel any wind. It just, you know, it's a little bit cold. Honda Goldwing 1100. Two motorcycles that made history for Honda in terms of reliability. This one was, you know, uh, the first, uh, not the first, this is the second uh, model of Goldwing. The first one was Goldwing 1000, and this one was uh, it's a Goldwing 1100, and the 1200 came out later in a year, and uh, only one year, I believe 1985 or 1986, I might be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but it came out for only one year with fuel injection. I don't know why they take it out. But um, it would be nice to keep the fuel injection all the way to the 1500 models because it would have been a really great bike. I heard a lot of people prefer the 1500 over 1800 because they're a little bit bigger. They have a little bit more uh, leg room. Um, and uh, I don't know. I guess they are a little bit more reliable without all those electronics of... Uh, fuel injected motorcycle uh, tab you know but mine it was just a, a winter project what happened to my mirror oh. ah, this came out of specs okay mine was just a winter project it's not a keeper for me uh, I would like to get a GL 1800 preferably the latest model that it's more sporty but uh, even the you know the first gen 1800 that came out in 2001, I would look I would love to have one of those. They're great bikes. I always kept an eye on those and uh, read a lot of reviews. Seen a lot of people taking cross country and camping and all that stuff with a 1800, and I would like to have one. But I came across a deal for this GL 1500, and. Uh, I mean, it came out okay. I think it came out pretty good. And I'm enjoying it when I can. Currently for sale. But I'll, uh, I'll ride it as much as I can. And uh, as long as the weather, the weather is nice enough for me to take it out for a spin. <laughs> it sounds good. It sounds good. Looks like he's stopping here. Should have given me a head start because the brakes on this are just horrible. Oh my god. That was me pushing it to the max. <laughs> Try to stop. He just gunned it. I'm trying. I'm trying with this one. <laughs> My hands are numb too. Oh, he wanted to go. I don't, I don't have the power. One, two, three, go. He's like a rocket ship. He just goes. <laughs> this is slow, man. The 1500 is not too fast, but it's, it's definitely faster than this one. <laughs> Look at this. All back roads. Riding those classic motorcycles. It feels like you're in a movie. I wish it wasn't this cold. Because this would be really enjoyable. You know, no traffic. Twisty back roads. Forest on the left and right. It's, uh, it's a nice riding. It's a nice riding experience on those classic motorcycles too. The airplane parked in front of someone's barn or house. <laughs> that would make a nice Airbnb. <laughs> Seems like you like it. It's so weird to find a brake on this thing. I have to like lift my leg all the way up to find it. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's so much more space over here to like have your legs, man. Yeah. You know what? Uh, the first gear on this has got a kick. It's like it comes on abruptly, right? Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's the car it needs to be like completely clean because right now like I said it's not a hundred. But <laughs> Oh shit. In the process of me putting my leg down, I put a damn kickstand down. It seems like the kickstand switch is out because the bike did not die. So <laughs> you have to be careful. You might ride with a damn kickstand down. What you think? That's the Beastmaster. <laughs> Beastmaster, mode. Beastmaster 3000. Right, let me put it on a on a kickstand. Yeah, that's the Beastmaster. <laughs> uh, the exhaust is pretty loud. That's the only thing. That, that's the only thing that I don't like about it. All right, so we're finally home. He liked the ride. So that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.